Welcome back, traders. A uh, quick break here. We got Matt McCall on the line of uh, Penn Financial Group. Matt, how you doing today? Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. How's it going there, Matt? Fantastic. Excellent. Beautiful morning in New York City. I can't go wrong. New York City. Awesome. So, and we're going to talk a little ETFs here with Matt today. And uh, Matt, before we get into uh, the ETFs, and f for sure, uh, while we're discussing them, just throw out the symbols here. I know some of them, I don't know all of them, but uh, before we get started into any specific ETFs, could you just give us uh, your brief education and trading background? Sure. Background began uh, with a couple, little bit of money in college uh, in the heyday of the uh, stock market. And uh, like any gambler back in the day, I did pretty well, lost it all, made some, lost it all, and uh, I fell in love with the market. Uh, I was a stockbroker for Charles Schwab for a few years, uh, ran a uh, newsletter company for a few years out of Denver, Colorado, uh, had a national radio show for a few years as well, and then uh, I started Penn Financial Group about nine years ago. I uh, wrote two books, uh, one called The Next Great Bull Market, which came out the bottom of the market, got very lucky there, and uh, also another one called The Swing Trader's Bible, uh, which is all about swing trading uh, for both stocks and ETFs. So you could give us uh, a, few, uh, a few tips on uh, being on the radio and uh, on the internet then, huh? You guys sound great. I was listening to you for the last half hour. You got me out of bed early just for this, and I was, I'm glad <laughs> I got up. <laughs> What um so uh, so you got those two books? Are you working on any other books here right now or? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on two more. I, I'm working on one on ETFs, which I've been uh, wanting to do for a long time, just because of the explosion of ETFs. And right. uh, I, you know, I find many days, you know, traveling around the country, clients and speaking that you know a lot of people have heard of ETFs at this point in time with well over a trillion dollars in in the products. But a lot of people don't understand them. Uh, they still feel somewhat of a foreign investment that they'd rather park themselves into a mutual fund, uh, which charges four times the expense ratio and underperforms right. the market. It's, so I, I think people need to be educated uh, on ETFs. Also working on a book, uh, I've been traveling around the world interviewing different people, uh, how uh, the financial collapses happened has affected them. I was in Panama recently, interviewed the president down there, just trying to get a view of how life has changed since this financial collapse. And uh, you also have a product on uh, MarketFi that uh, deals with trading uh, the ETFs. Could you just uh, tell us about your product on MarketFi quickly? Sure. It's uh, called MarketForce. Basically, what we do is that we're just doing ETFs uh, at this point. No stocks, just exchange-traded funds. And I call, that's what I call swing trading. Everybody can view that, I guess, a little different. Uh, my typical holding period is going to be, let's say, uh, a week or so to several months to even a year if the, if the swing continues, if that trend continues. I look at the charts every day and try to find the sectors, uh, the countries that I believe are pulling back. In this bull market we've been in now for, what, five years, uh, we've had a lot of pullbacks along the way. Everybody that I talk to or you watch on the, on the financial news, every time there's a pullback says, I told you so, and they're selling into it. Well, you know what? We're in a bull market. Don't fight the trend. Buy into those swings. So I attempt to try to catch those swings for our subscribers. So you focus on ETFs. Um, now, why uh, focus on the ETFs as opposed to stocks? Like, Just discuss like, you know, maybe some of the pros and cons of ETFs as, a, as opposed to stocks. Sure. I mean, I, I do both for my clients. The, the money that I manage for my clients, we do both stocks and ETFs. This product, though, that we, we do uh, at MarketFi – a lot of individual investors cannot handle the volatility that comes with an individual stock. You know, just an example is they report earnings four times a year. We're in the midst of earnings season now. You guys are talking about a lot of stocks reporting earnings. You, know, you can come out and miss numbers and see a stock yeah. easily drop 20%. A lot of people can't handle that. They'll panic. The emotional decisions, they'll sell and take a big loss. Uh, so I think when, you, when you're looking at uh, ETFs, you can, you can attack an entire sector. If you believe the financials are a great opportunity right now, you can do that and not have to pick that one individual stock. Now, which uh, if you're looking at the financials, which ETF would you uh, prefer to to trade there? Well, I, the one I own right now is actually the regionals, uh, which is IAT. It's a symbol. That's the regional uh, banks, uh, U.S. banks. Yeah. The reason I like that is because I think we all know and, and agree that interest rates are eventually going to go up. Uh, as interest rates go up, it actually may be more beneficial to the regionals versus uh, the large money centers. Um, so that's one that I like. And it's actually underperformed a little bit here as of late. Um, but I think it's a great opportunity probably in the next six to 18 months for that one. Um, but my, my, my real uh, favorite as far as financial is concerned is actually, and you guys were talking about this earlier, the European financials. Uh, I, the symbol is uh, EUFN, which is European Financial ETF. And uh, we, we recently actually sold it in, uh, in, in Market Force in a product that, that we have on MarketFi. We recently sold it, took a profit, looking to get back in. 
Um, they're down today, as you mentioned, but I think valuation-wise, the European financials are extremely attractive longer term. Um, and, and you know, even though the EU came out this morning and said uh, they, they lowered the growth estimates for 2014 for the uh, eurozone, I still believe that banks are a great value play. So, hey, you, are you still liking the European banks? Then you're thinking here that this pullback here is like a buying opportunity. I do. You know, I think the overall market right now, I'm extremely bullish, but overall market right now is overextended. We actually, we went from 90% invested last week down to 40%. We okay. took a bunch of profits last week because I think we're due for a pullback in the overall markets. You know, I, for example, my one of my big holdings is ING Group, ING, which is a, a, a yeah. European bank. You know, that, that closed yesterday at a multi-year high. It's down this morning with everything else. But so I, I think it's going to pull back. I think EUFN, which is the ETF, uh, will also pull back at this point. But, you know, looking at the chart, you know, I, I'd look to buy maybe around 23, 2310 on EUFN, which would be about you know, a four to five percent pullback from a high, which to me is, is a typical healthy pullback. And I'd use that as a buying opportunity. And uh, do you use leveraged ETFs? I, I know that, uh, Dennis, you, you had some comments on uh, leveraged ETFs. Are they, uh, are they part of your portfolio? Um, very, very rare. Um, the reason for that is a leveraged ETF, um, you're actually short volatility. So the longer that you hold it, you know, for example, if you're three times the, the S&P 500, it doesn't actually always work out. The longer yeah. you hold it, the, the more, you know, uh, the tracking error there is. And I got to yeah. tell you, for, for most investors out there that are following and listening to this or are following the products, they'll get stuck in, in these things. And, and I got to tell you, I, I, every time I speak at a money show or something, people come up to me and they're like, they're mad at me. What the hell's going on here? Why did this triple ETF do what it's supposed to do? And they held on to it for six months. You know, they yeah. just the people don't understand it. So to me, it's extremely dangerous. If you're an educated trader and you're trading for a day or two, it's great. Last week, we we after the Fed came out, I don't know if you you know you're watching and see how gold uh, got crushed and the gold miners got got uh, got smacked around right after that. We actually recommended Dust, which is D U S T, which is very uh, cr crazy. It's triple leverage negative uh, on the gold miners. Yeah. And we made 6% in like 11 minutes and we got out. But that is extremely rare for me to do something like that. Yeah. And, and just to expand on that point, this is what we've talked about the show in the past. If you don't understand how the leveraged ETFs work, they track the daily performance. And this is the key that the triple, um, when they're three times levered, they're just tracking daily performances. So on that day, if the market's up uh, a percent, that leveraged ETF should be up 3%. But they have to adjust every day for their holdings because obviously it continues to, to move and they have to adjust these holdings to stay triple uh, bullish or triple bearish. And these adjustments in the um, obviously cost money to you know be buying and selling stocks so they actually end up you know, when the market is up they need to buy more when the market is down they need to sell more and that can be costly too and obviously the tracking errors in the long run because these things you know when you buy this thing everybody thinks oh if the market's up 20 percent next year i'm going to make 60 it doesn't work that way because it's tracking the individual daily performances so it matters on how the actual move happened as opposed to it just happening and you're getting triple your money yeah that you correct? explained that perfectly and and what happens a lot of times you could hold something for six months uh, and actually, the inverse and both the leverage, both you think one's up 20, one should be down 20, they're both negative because what yeah. happens is that, that rebalance. So people, yeah, if you don't understand it, you should not be in them. Yeah, and that's the big thing. And I see this all the time from people that, you know, obviously aren't uh, traders. Like um, you'll see people coming in and just, um, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to buy that triple, you know, and they're, you know, people just working a construction job and they got the stockbrokers got them in some triple levered ETF. It's like, holy cow, these are trading vehicles. They're not investing vehicles. If that thing's in your account, I agree completely with you, with you Matt. If that's in your account for more than a few days, you're in the wrong vehicle and that's it you know and you can be right with the call you know and, and you have the wrong vehicle and lose money so that's, that's, that's a great point you could, yeah you're actually right but you't make any money that's the worst yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's how Wall Street treats you sometimes uh, there, there's options on ETFs do you, do you use options to offset risk rock and lock in profits or enter, enter new positions? You know, I don't that often. Uh, the only time that I usually utilize uh, um, options on ETFs is uh, for a cover call strategy. So, you know, if, if something's a little bit more volatile in ETF, uh, it's run up. 
and it's something I think I want to hold longer term. Uh, I, I see it hitting resistance. I'll sell a front month call against it, uh, you know, raise some cash, lower cost basis, and, and continue to do that. I, am, I have not done that as much uh, recently because the volatility has been a little bit lower, so you're not getting a lot of premiums. But you know, if, if you use options, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes to that. I, I think ETFs, uh, our options on ETFs are, are a great play because, again, um, you're playing a sector. So if you believe in, a, again, that maybe the European financials and you don't want to buy it, you want to be a little more leveraged, you know, put together an option strategy. So I, I, it's not my uh, forte, but I think it's a, it's a great avenue if that's what you're doing. So it sounds to me like you do use the technicals a lot in your trading. So is that what you're looking at more than even the fundamentals is looking for nice technical setups? Like what do you look for um, you know, in the technicals? You know, what, I'll, look, I'll look both ways. You know, sometimes I'll start my research. I always do a top down. So I'll start, you know, more ma- macro, work my way down to the country sectors. And from there, not bottom up, but most research firms do bottom up. They'll find a stock that they love, for example, and buy it no matter what. If you're buying a stock in a sector that's clearly in a downtrend, not doing well, what are the odds of you picking that one stock that's going to outperform all its peers? I think the odds are very low. So I'm going to go the opposite way. So as I work my way down, um, I'll, I'll look at the charts and find charts that I think look good. It has to have a fundamental story behind it. Um, an example is, for example, I, I believe the, the auto industry is uh, setting up for a big boom in the next couple of years. Uh, the average age of a vehicle on the road in the U.S., uh, o- over 11 years, the highest it's ever been. Uh, you're seeing auto sales start to tick up from very, very low levels in Europe. Uh, Asia sales are still good. So that's a fundamental view that I find. But then I look at the charts, guys. If the charts don't look good, then I'm at, there's no, you know, I'm obviously wrong. I'm not going to try to, you know, be a hero here and, and fight the trend. But when I, I I came up with this idea maybe six months ago. Uh, I looked at a chart of uh, CARS, C-A-R-Z, which is the uh, auto uh, ETF. And you look at the chart, it's fantastic. So, you know, why not jump into something like that? You're playing a great chart and you're playing some fundamentals behind it as well. These are witty ticker symbols that come with C-A-R-Z. Oh, I great. love that. <laughs> that's a great ticker symbol there. So I didn't even know that one. So thanks for letting us know. What, what other ETFs here are uh, on your radar here? What other ones are you eyeing up right now? Um, cars I like actually in this pullback. Um, I, I mentioned uh, the European financials I like. Um, I like Europe too. I know Europe uh, is kind of still volatile, but I still like that longer term. Um, I, another one I love, which this is more of a short term uh, technical play, is FAN, F A N, another witty symbol, which is a global right. wind energy ETF. I mean, awesome. I. I I got to tell you, you know, I'm not a greenie by any means. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't drive a car because I live in New York, but that's not because I don't care, you know, about anything. But I, I don't drive a car. But, you know, I look at this. I, I think wind energy is probably not that feasible for a lot of areas. But this this chart on this ETF is amazing. And and it's gotten crushed the last couple of years, but it's turned around in the last 12 months. And, and you try to find a chart that's better than this, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's a great looking uptrend. So this is a momentum play. I heard you guys mention momentum earlier in the show. I think this is a great momentum play if you're looking for a, you know, a pure swing trade. You don't have the fundamentals behind it, so it's not a long-term trade, but it's a, it's a nice swing trade. I want to trade all these things just because of the ticker symbols, cars, <laughs> fan, these things. These guys are geniuses marketing these things. <laughs> How about overvalued uh, things that uh, you perhaps would caution you know investors to uh, stay away from, or uh, you know, I mean, uh, shorting our opportunity or looking at puts. What what sectors are you shying away from? You know, I'm, uh, one that I'm shying away from is the uh, consumer staples. Uh, he is a symbol on that one. Um, even though it recently actually has a very nice looking chart here, it's been in a consolidation pattern for the last few months, broke above 42, and actually it's, technically it looks very strong right here if it holds that 42 level. I, I just believe that consumer staples um, are, are a bit long in the tooth. Uh, the valuation is very high for them. And, and I, I, I believe the market's going to be strong due to the Fed uh, continuing to hold off on the tapering uh, into early next year. So you, you want to be in a little bit more aggressive sectors, and money will rotate out of the consumer staples. So I'm going to stay away from that right now. I'm not saying you, sh- you shouldn't hold maybe some in your portfolio if you're a long-term investor, but I'm going to stay away from that. And the other one is gold. And, and, and for years, I was one of the biggest uh, gold bulls out there. We started buying back in 2007. Uh, we sold uh, this year, uh, up in January, we sold GLD, had a huge profit. Um, and I've actually been gold, uh, short gold here for the last couple of months, and uh, I'm going to continue to be short gold. I think there's no reason to own it right now. Um, you know, I I think there's inflation, but according to the government, we don't have inflation, so there's no reason <laughs> to own it for that. Um, you know, I mean, I go to the grocery store, I buy I, I buy my groceries. You know, I I know how much stuff costs. So you know, I, Obama and and the, and the and the government could tell me like, whatever they want. 
I, clearly, he doesn't do the food shopping for the White House. So there's no, <laughs> you know, there's no inflation according to. So you don't want to own gold for that. And the other thing is, when you have everything else doing well, all you know, the, the equities markets around the world. Why would you put your money in gold? It, it, look at the trend; it's terrible. Why would you put your money there? Even you know, when Syria was happening and, and things over around uh, around the world, there's geopolitical concerns. Gold still didn't go up. When we had the government shutdown, gold still didn't go up. So to That's me, true. there's no reason to own it here. Yeah, it's supposed to be defensive, and if it's not, obviously we're getting concerns. And you know, when we're having the you know different concerns out there, and gold's not going up in that environment, when is it going to go up? Um, one last thing, we want we always ask our guests, what do you think going into the end of the year here? We obviously got a couple of months. Are we going to see like a Santa Claus rally here, or what do you predict is going to happen with this market? We're getting a little pullback here this morning. You know, I, I still think we probably end higher than where we are today uh, come the end of December. But I said, I think we're extremely oversold right now in a short term. Uh, looking at Charlie S&P 500, you know, this 1770 area to me is the upper end of a, uh, a channel that we've been in for about six months. And we usually have a pullback about every month or so. And it's almost like clockwork if you look at the chart. And every time we have this pullback, guys, 4 or 5%, whatever it might be, CNBC and everything out there says, yeah, I told you so. This is it. The market's falling apart. <laughs> every time that happens, what happens? Happens, the they market bounces. And you know what? One thing I can say to listeners is, you know, you always tell yourself when you look at a stock, look at the market, and you say, you know what? Just give me a 5% pullback. I'm going to get back in the market. Just give me a 5% pullback. Let that stock pull back a buck. What happens when you have a 5% pullback? You freak out and you do the exact opposite. You sell, you sit on your hands, you don't right. buy. You know, the right. hardest thing to do is buy when you're down, but that's what you need to do. So I would use any pullback that we get uh, at any point this month uh, to start putting money back in the market. Well, Matt, uh, thank you for this uh, informative and spirited interview here. I just thought uh, we want to remind our traders here of your product, uh, Market ETF Force on uh, the Market Fi platform. Uh, I think I'm going to go check it out after the show here because uh, things that you talked about here seem to make a lot of sense into the market and uh, certainly worth taking a look at. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being on, uh, for your informative um, outlook on the market, and uh, we hope we can have you on back again soon. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Thanks a lot, and good luck with everything. Okay. Thanks, Matt.